We begin now at the top of Daf Nun Amar Aleph in Masachas Brachas. This is Brachas Daf Fifty Eight. The Gemara just finished with a uh, quote from Shmuel. Shmuel said it's better that a person should not take himself out of the klal. A person should always try to include himself in the group. So the Gemara asked a question from our Mishnah. The Mishnah said that when you have four people, uh, instead of saying Nevarech, you say Baruchu because you're indicating that uh, you're a group of four. Three of them are really enough to make a zimun Baruchu. They can make the bracha, not Nevarech. We make the bracha. So it's a question on Shmuel. Aren't you supposed to include yourself in the group? Isn't it preferable? to say nevarich, that we are making the bracha. So the Gemara says, you're right, af baruchu, what the Mishnah really means is even baruchu is appropriate. When we call makam, and nevertheless, nevarich, if it is actually better to say nevarich, which means we're, we are going to make the bracha, uh, which allows the person to include himself in the group. The Yomar of Ada Barava, Amri Bey Rav, Tanina, because Rav Ada Barava said in the name of the Yeshiva of Rav that we have a proof to Shmuel uh, from our Mishnah. How is it a proof? Because it says in the mission of Vav Nechlok and Adyud that if you have six to six up until ten people, you can divide up however you want as long as we have three in each group. It doesn't make a difference. Let's say, for example, you have uh, seven people uh, eating together. You can divide up into a group of three and a group of four, and it doesn't make any difference because it's the same zimun either way. So, the, so now the uh, yeshiva of Rav they make the following proof for Shmuel. If, if you're going to say that it's better to say Nevarech, it's better to say that rather than Baruchu Mishum Hachi Nechlok, and that's why it makes sense to divide up. So again, if you have seven people, it doesn't matter if you're a group of four and then a group of three, because either way you're going to say But if you're going to take the opinion that it is better to say so why should you divide up? Now if you divide up to a group of four and a group of three, the group of three doesn't get to say You see from here that it's better to say and that it's actually a, a proof essentially to the position of Shmuel that a person should not take himself out from the klal. We have a brisa like this as well. Whether the person says the word Baruchu or the word Nevarich, we're not going to grab him on that, we're not going to attack him. Al Kach on this uh, kind of distinction. However, but those who are very meticulous about how they speak, they do say that a person that there's a preferable way to say it, it's better to say Nevarich. And you can tell from the Baruchus of a person if he's a Talmud Chacham or not. Kate said, How so? Rebbe Yomer, Rebbe says, Uvituvo hareza Talmud Chacham. If you say the word Uvituvo Chayinu, so then that implies that you want all of his goodness. You want uh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu should give us a lot of uh, a lot of good. Umituvo hareza Bor. But if you say from his goodness, that person is a Bor. He doesn't know. He's not a Talmud Chacham because that implies the person only wants a little bit or is only asking a little bit from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Amar le Abaya le Rav Dimi. So Abaya said to Rav Dimi, Vaksiv umi birchas cho yivarech beis avdecho liolam. From your brachas, uh, he, he should give a he should give a blessing. So there it sounds like we're requesting a small amount of bracha from Hakadosh Baruch Hu, not a lot. So the Gemara answers bishe'e lo shani. No, no, the, the difference is like this. In the in the second case over here, the person is making a request of God. If you're making a request of God, you shouldn't ask for a lot. Umi birchascha. But when it comes to the mezuman, you're not really making a request of, of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. You're giving a bracha that Hakadosh Baruch Hu, uh, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, you're stating that Hakadosh Baruch Hu gives us from his blessing or gives us his blessing rather. So therefore, you should say uvituvo chayinu and not umituvo chayinu. Uh, the Gemara then says, one second, Even when it comes to requesting from God, we have a pasuk which says, implying that we're requesting a lot from HaKadosh Baruch We do make big requests of HaKadosh Baruch So the Gemara says, There, there was a request that we should, uh, in Divrei Torah, in terms of learning, a person's allowed to request from HaKadosh Baruch Hatzlacha, a lot of Hatzlacha, when it comes to learning. But in other areas, let's say of Gashmias, then a person should not be making a large request. And again, though, when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to the mezuman, when a person says Baruch Shachalnu Mishalo Uvituvo Chayinu, there is just a bracha to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. It's just like a statement. So then you say Uvituvo. Uh, Tanya, we learned in a brisa. Rebbe Yomer, Rebbe says Bituvo Chayinu Hareza Talmud Chacham. If a person says we live with his good or by his good, that person is a Talmud Chacham. Chayim, but if it just says in general that Bituvo life is given Bituvo Hareza Bor, that already is uh, said by somebody who is not a Talmud Chacham. Nahar Bloy Masni Ibcha. Now Nahar Bloy actually had it the reverse. Apparently Nahar Bloy held that Chaim is preferable because it means all of life is given by Kadosh Baruch Hu. However, Veles Hilchesok in Nahar Bloy. The Allah is not like Nahar Bloy. It is preferable to say Chayinu, that it's not just uh, everyone else's life, even we're including ourselves. Chayinu in our life, Kadosh Baruch Hu gives us from his good for our life. 
Amr Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Nevarech shechalnu mishalo hareza talmud chacham, lemi shechalnu mishalo hareza bor. If you say, uh, if you add the word lemi, that we are blessing the one who we eat from his, uh, from his, that person is a bor, that person is not a talmud chacham. So, and what's the difference? Rashi explains that the difference is that lemisha chalnu mishalo could imply that you're really giving a bracha to the balabayis, not to HaKadosh Baruch so Amr le Rav Acha braid the Rav Ravashi. So Rav Acha, the son of Rav, said to Rav Ashi, "Vohamrinan lemisha asa lavoseinu volanu as kol anisim vaelu." We do say the phrase of when we're talking about the nisim that Hakadosh Baruch Hu did. We say to the one who did the nisim. So how come over there it's okay to say the word lemi? But Rabbi Yochanan said that when it comes to benching with a zim, when you can't say the word lemi. So Amr Lay said to him, Hasa Mukhamilsa, there it's very clear who you're talking about. Man of Nisi Kutchabrichu, who else does Nisim? Who else performs miracles other than Akarish Baruchu? Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Baruch Shachan Mishalo HaRezah Talmud Chacham. If a person says a bracha to the one we ate from his, that person is a Talmud Chacham. That's clearly implying that you're giving a bracha to HaKadosh Baruch Hu for uh, giving us the food. However, Al Hamazon Shachal HaRezah Bor. Just saying a bracha on the food which we ate, it's not clear that you're giving a bracha to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so that person is a bor. Amar Rav Huna Breid Rav Yoshua, Rav Huna, the son of Rav Yoshua, says, Lo Amar Ela Begimel Delek Hashem Shamayim. This is only true by a zimun of three, where we don't say Elo Kena, we don't say the name of God. Avol Be'asar Adik Hashem Shamayim, but if you are uh, benching with ten people, where anyways you're saying Elo Kena, you're saying the name of God, Mukha Mil, so then it is clear, it's obvious that uh, you're making a bracha, you're blessing uh, the Balabai, you're, ble- you're blessing HaKadosh Baruch Hu, not the Balabai or anybody else. Kiritnan, like we said in the Mishnah, Ke'inyan Shehu Mavarech, Kach Onen Achrav. In the same way that he makes the bracha, the people that answer, they say the uh, the same style of language. Uh, for example, Baruch Hashem Elokei Yisrael, Elokei HaTzavakos, Yoshev HaKruvim, Al Hamazon Shechalnu. So the point is that in that situation, if you said Al Hamazon Shechalnu, as the Mishnah says, that's fine because you're saying Baruch Hashem Elokei Yisrael, it's clear you're, you're, you're blessing HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But if you don't have Elokeinu in there, then you just say Baruch Al Hamazon Shechalnu, it's not clear that you're uh, giving a bracha to HaKadosh Baruch Hu for the food. The Gemara now continues at the two dots, Echad Asar of Echad Asar Aribo. So we had in the Mishnah, it was uh, somewhat contradictory. The Gemara is about to point out, when you get past 10 people, does the bracha change when you get to 100 people, 1,000 people? So the Gemara says, Hagufa Kasha. It seems to be internally a uh, contradiction. Amrit Echad Asar of Echad Asar Aribo. One phrase of the Mishnah says, doesn't matter if it's 10, doesn't matter if it's 10,000. Alma Ki Adad you see it's the same bracha once you get 10 or more. But then the mission says, Bimeya Omer, Be'elif Omer, Beribo Omer. Then it says, if it's a hundred, if it's a thousand, if it's ten thousand, it gives us a different text. So the mission, it seems to contradict itself. Amr of Yosef, Rav Yosef says, Lo kash, it's not a kasha. Ha Rav Yosef Aglili, Ha Rav Yikiva. The truth is that these different phrases in the Mishnah, one follows Rav Yosef Aglili and one follows Rav Yikiva, and that's in the Mishnah itself. The Tanan, as it said in the Mishnah, Rav Yosef Aglili, Omer, Rav Yosef Aglili says, Lefi rov hakol he mevarchin. According to the size of the congregation, that's how the brach is structured. Shanema, like it says, B'makelos baruchu elokim. So B'makelos, according to the crowd, according to the congregation, that's how we bless HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's Rav Yosef Aglili's opinion. And Rav Yikiva disagrees. Rav Yikiva Kiva says once you get to ten, so the bracha remains the same whether it's ten or a hundred or a thousand, etc. I'm Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Kiva says, What do we find in Shul? We find that it doesn't matter if ten or more, it's always the same bracha, it doesn't change. That was Rabbi Kiva's opinion in the Mishnah. So the Gemara says, Rabbi Kiva, hi Krod, Rabbi Yosi Aglili, my Ovidle. What does Rabbi Kiva do with the Pasuk that Rabbi Yosi Aglili uses, Bimakelos Barchu Elokim, which seems to imply that the bracha changes according to the size? So the Gemara answers, Mi Boyle the Chiratanya, he needs it for the following Brice, so Hayer Rabbi Meir Omer, Rabbi Meir says, Minayin Shafilu Ubrin Shibimei Imon, Amrush. How do we know that even the fetuses that are in the womb, they said Shira when they were saved on the Yam? So Shanema, like it says, Hashem, Mimakori Yisrael. Mimakori Yisrael means like from the source of Israel, sounds like, or it's a reference to the Ubrin, the, the uh, fetuses that are in the womb. So the Gemara says, What does the other opinion do? The, that's what Rabbi Akiva does with this Pasuk of Rabbi Yossi Aglili. How does Rabbi Yossi Aglili learn out this idea? So the other opinion, Rabbi Yossi Aglili, he learns it out from the word Mekor. In other words, the uh, the, the uh, understanding that uh, according to the size of the congregation, that's learned from the word Bimakelos, as he said before. And then the word Mekor, Mi Mekor, teaches that uh, even the Ubrin Shebimei Iman says Shira Al Hayam. Amar Rav, Rav says, Halacha Rabbi Kiva, the Halacha is like Rabbi Kiva, that it does not matter what the what the size of the uh, of the uh, of the meal, how many people are at the meal, it makes no difference once you have ten or more. 
So Ravina of Ravchama Barbuzi iklu leve Reish Kalusa. So Ravina and Ravchama Barbuzi they went to the house of the Reish Kalusa. Come Ravchama v'kam Mahader Abay Meya. And Ravchama got up and he was looking for a hundred people. He wanted to. He understood that the text of the bracha changes. The text of the zimun cha- changes if the meal has a hundred people. So he wanted to uh, search to get a hundred. Amar le Ravina. Ravina said to him, "Lo tzrich, you don't need to do that." Hachi Amar Rava so said, "Rava halachik Rabbi Akiva." Like we said just a moment ago, the halach is like Rabbi Akiva. Once you have ten people, it doesn't matter how many more people. Than ten you have. On my Rava, Rava says, "Kiachlin on Rifta be Reish Kalusa." He said, "When we when we eat bread in the house of the Reish Kalusa, mevarchin on Gimel Gimel." We actually divide up into groups of three. The Gemara will explain uh, in a few moments that the, the Reish Kalusa had so many people at the meals it was difficult to hear if you tried to uh, answer to the zimun of the Reish Kalusa. So sometimes it was preferable to divide up into groups of three. But the Gemara asks, "Vilivrechu yud yud." If you're already dividing up into groups and it's a very large crowd, why not just divide into groups of ten? And then you could say uh, Elokeinu, you could say Hashem's name. So the Gemara says, no, Shama Reish Galusa v'ikbid. The Reish Galusa would hear, and that he would already be strict about. He, it was an embarrassment that people should be dividing up, but with three people he wouldn't hear, it wouldn't be a problem. So the Gemara says, v'nevku b'birchas the Reish Galusa. Okay, so why don't they just be Yotze with the brach of the Reish Galusa when he leads the benching, and then you'll have a nice big crowd. So the Gemara says, like uh, we just mentioned, I do the Avshu, since there's so many people, kuli amalo shami. Not everybody can hear what the Reish Galusa is saying. Amar Rabba Tosfa, Rabba Tosfa says, Hani Gimel, the Karchi Rifta Bahade Hadadi. If you have three people who are eating bread together, and then one guy decides to bench on his own, so Inu Nafgin Bezimun Dide, they can be Yodze Zimun with him. In other words, if he joins in to be like a third person for their Zimun, that can work for them. Iu Lo Nafik Bezimun did who, but he cannot retroactively be Yodze Zimun if he's already benched. Lafisha ain't Zimun Lamafre. There's no Zimun uh, retroactively. Basically, you can't bench first and then say, I'll be Yotze my Zimun later. The Zimun has to precede the benching. The Gemara now quotes the opinion of Rabbi Yishmael. Uh, Rabbi Yishmael Omer. Rabbi Yishmael said that when you daven in Shul, you say, Baruch Hu Hashem HaMevorach. Rabbi Yishmael was responding to Rabbi Akiva's statement. Rabbi Akiva said that we find in Shul, no matter how many people you have, it doesn't, you don't change the text. You always say, Baruch Hu Hashem. But Rabbi Yishmael just added on that you don't just say, Baruch Hu Hashem, you say, Baruch Hu Hashem HaMevorach. So the Gemara is a little story uh, in regards to Rabbi Yishmael's Psaq. Rafram Bar Papa Iklo Levei Knishta Da Bey Gevar. So Rafram Bar Papa, he went to the Shul that was in Bey Gevar, and Kam Kra Besifra Vyomar Bar when he was davening, he said, Baruch Hu Hashem, he didn't say HaMavorach. Avshu Kuliyama, Baruch Hashem HaMavorach. The whole crowd responded, Baruch Hu Hashem HaMavorach. They corrected him. They said, you left out the word HaMavorach. Amar Rava, so Rava said, Pasya uh, Uchma means like a black clay pottery. Baha was, was a, a, a name he was calling to, uh, he was, this was a name he was referring to Rafan Bar Papa. He said to him, Pluxa Lama, Baha de Pluxa Lama, what do you need to get into arguments for? Why are you saying Baruch Hashem without Hamavorach when you know that people say Hamavorach? Plus, you know that the Minig is like Rabbi Yishmael, so therefore it would have been better had you just uh, taken the opinion of Rabbi Yishmael and said Baruch Hashem Hamavorach, no reason to take the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. Gemara now continues with the Mishnah. Gimel sha'ach lo ka'achas einon rashoin lecholik. If you have three people uh, eating a meal together, they can't divide up because they can't break the zimun. V'chein dalit, v'chein chamisha, the same with four or five. Vav nechlok and asar. If you have six people, they can divide up all the way through till ten, as long as you keep everybody in a zimun. V'asara ein nechlok and archaf. And if you have ten people, they can't divide until they get to twenty to keep the elokeinu. Uh, if you have two groups that are eating in one house, as long as some of them can see from each group, some of them can see each other, they could join together for a zimun. And if not, then they have to have zimun separately. holds, you can't make a brach on wine unless there's a little water in there. It makes it that it's more edible. say Even wine without any water in it is... Uh, Ro'i for a zimun. The Gemara says, My Kamashma, what is this teaching us? Tanina Chodazim, that we already said that three people make a zimun, that they can't break up. It says, Gimel Sha'ach Lukachas, Chayav and Lazavi, three people eat together, they need to make a zimun, so of course they can't break up. So the Gemara says, Ha Kamashma Lan, Kihad Amar Rabbi Abba Amar Shmuel, Gimel Sha'yashvu Lechol Kaachas, Vadayin Lo Achlu, Ein Rashon Lecholik. No, he's teaching us an added Chiddush, uh, the Chiddush of Rabbi Abba 
that Rabbi Abba said in the name of Shmuel that when three people, even if they sit to eat and they haven't started eating, they can't divide up. Lishna Achrina, there's another version of Rabbi Abba Mar Shmuel. Amar Rabbi Abba Mar Shmuel, Hachi Gatani. Gimel Shiyashvu Lechol Ka'achas, three people sit to eat together. Afa Pishakol Echod Viachod Ochal Mikikaru, even though each one is eating from his own loaf. Ainon Rashoin Lecholik. Again, they cannot divide up. Inami, or you could say he's teaching us the following Chiddush. Kihad de Rav Huna. It's the Chiddush of Rav Huna. The Amar Rav Huna, Rav Huna says, Gimel Shabomi, Gimel Chaburus. If you have three people coming from three different groups, Ainon Rashoin they're not allowed to divide up once they uh, join together. Amar Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda says, V'u'shabom mi gimel chabura shel gimel b'nei adam. We're talking about, specifically, Rav Huna is talking about where they come from three groups of three people each. So they were each chayiv in a zimun. Once they became chayiv in a zimun, they need to do a zimun. So if they then join together, each from each of the individuals from the separate groups join together on their own, then are uh, joined together in their own group, then they need to make a zimun. Amar Rav, now Rav says, Rav is also going to have a qualification uh, on Rav Huna's statement about three people coming from three separate groups. We which we'll see on Daf Nun Amid Beis in the next video.